is for, this is why I exist, that's the place it needs to come from. If we don't have that, if we're in a place of saying they don't love me, and the, sorry, the, if the system directive is they don't love me, then we are always wrong, we're always guilty, and we always feel shame, whatever happens. So it becomes very easy to guilt trip you into doing what I want you to do if I'm a coercive little fucker. I can guilt you into doing it. I can make you feel sympathy for me. How many of you have been in bad relationships and stayed because you felt sympathy for the person? Like sympathy stopped you from leaving. This is this. This is slave mentality entrainment from a tyrant in childhood that's making you feel like you're wrong, you're guilty, or you feel ashamed. Wrong, by the way, is you sat there at night going, when he said this to me, I'm sure he meant this, but now I'm not sure at all. I'm wrong. I can't, I can't be right. So if I can never be right, I can't trust my decisions. So we've got to get past this to a state of where you feel like you are loved, you do have permission to be, and then you're gonna get out of this feeling of wrongness, guilt, and shame, where you're gonna to start to trust yourself, where you feel like, no, I can make a decision, I am right, and I do have a right to be. Having a right to be is absolutely critical. A lot of you uh, worry about your own thoughts, right? You spend time reviewing what it is that you think you thought you saw or heard, and then afterwards going, oh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But this is usually in love, right? It's not in life. It's not like if your boss says it to you, it's love. So if your partner does something and lies to you, you can usually, or she can usually worm their way around it. In love and intimacy, this is where the damage is done. So that's the trigger. Love and intimacy becomes the trigger. In other words, we're a fuck of a lot dumber in love than anywhere else in life. Like you'd be a very intelligent human being and then in the area of love just be <laughs> not so bright. All of this, all of this is all of the CPTSD, CPTSR4 Fs. It's fight, it's freeze, it's fawn, but it's predominantly what we're talking about with this codependency is a neurotic fawning response. I am not worthy of love as I am, I'm not. So I must give you, I must serve you, I must trade with you, I, I, I'll do this for you, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you the other thing. I can't just show up and be enough. So it's a, it's a hyper fawning response. This bleeds out from intimacy and loving relationships. It'll be the way you do business. It'll be the way you uh, take care of yourself or don't take care of yourself. How many of you have got a lot of uh, ongoing illnesses, physical issues? Yeah. Um, that actually, I think, is part of codependency. I don't have the right to be. So I'm not inside my body. I'm not feeling good. I'm not trying to heal myself. I don't love myself. Why is my body gonna fix itself? There's no love in the system. I never thought I'd sound like Louise L. Hay. <laughs> Here I am. It's a lack of love of the self. It's the, uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the syntax in which it's presented, but it's the same message. I mean, that's, that's exactly what she would have said. If there's, if there's a sickness and it's recurrent, it's a lack of love of the self. To an English ear, it sounds a little cheesy, but, you know, I took it on. I think it's... Um, it's literally true, it's psychologically valid. If there is a lack of a sense of right to be and feeling good about who you are, then your body will not heal. Then you will get sick. And if you get sick uh, in certain ways over and over again. Do any of you know what knee is, by the way? It's a, it's a crit, crit, stubbornness. stubbornness and lack of flexibility. Oh. The last time I got a problem was my neck. Stubbornness and a lack of flexibility. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Fucking stubborn. I pride myself on that because that's my CPTSD response. That's my codependent response. I'm stubborn. I can hold on. I can, uh, I'm like a pit bull. If I want to do something, I'll hold on. You can do anything to me, but once the jaws lock down, I'm going to get it fixed. I've been very proud of that for years. And yes, I consider myself an intelligent man. <laughs> it's a ridiculous way of trying to live your life. If it's not working, stop. You're like a fucking pit bull. Who wants to act like a dog? You know, you've got to be smarter than that. Don't just see it through to the end because there's some weird principle that you're trying to adhere to. Just let it go. If it's not serving you, let it go. Being tough, a lot of our ideas of toughness, I have this theory that a lot of people in the military, a lot of people you get in the FBI and the police, riddled with CPTSD, riddled. 
and very, very good at their jobs. Very good, because the CPTSD drives the obsession. Uh, it's like, you can shoot me, I don't really count that much. It's okay, you can kill me, as long as I die serving somebody else. As, yeah, as long as I die in service, then we're good. So, on this side, apart from the uh, CPTSD, we would have no CPTSD, it would be healed. Wow. What would life look like if you didn't have that as an excuse anymore? <laughs> Pretty scary, right? That means you're going to be you. By the way, there are downsides to this in a certain sense. If this actually works for you and you overcome your codependency, you'll grow up. You'll grow up. You'll mature. And as that happens, things die. Yeah, things die. Because that's life. That's real things start to die. You'll notice parts of yourself dying and then dropping off. Not physically. Well, eventually, I guess. But, like, you know, <laughs> internally, emotionally, there are things that you're holding on to that are like uh, toys from childhood. There are ways of dealing with reality. It goes. You've got to be willing for that to happen. You've got to be willing to change in the most crucial ways. Your politics will change, your ideas about money will change, your ideas about relationships. A lot of stuff for me this year has gone in the fucking bin. Things that I've held on to for years, they've gone. Uh, my, my own family, like, they're saying to me, oh, you're being much more sensible with money now. I haven't thought once about money, nothing. There's no like, oh, I must be more careful. It's just I'm taking all my toys home. They're my toys. So for years I've been like, oh, I'm a lonely kid. I'm a lonely kid, come and play with me. There's all my toys, play with them. And now I'm going, no, these are mine, mine. That's natural, that's normal, that's a phase. Freud would have said that's a phase that you're supposed to go through. I think that's, I think that's actually the anal phase. <laughs> of course it is, Richard. Everything is with you. The anal phase, darling, again. We're gonna break soon. <laughs> um, that element of uh, saying this is mine and you can't have it and holding on to stuff. That's actually the anal retentive phase. Um, it's natural, you're supposed to grow through that. I never, I never got there. I never developed past the age of four in certain elements of my life. So my money's your money. My things are your things. I don't even care, I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Christian mystic, it's all material stuff, man. Just let it go. But I'm being a coward because I'm not letting it go. Not really, I'm trading with the outside world. Please don't see me, because it's so tedious for me to be seen. Please don't look at me. It's disgusting, I don't like it, you won't like it. Leave me alone, leave me alone. That's what I'm trying to do. It's cowardice, it's cowardice. It's no way to live your life. Here's uh, something challenging. So on this side we have Echo, the Echo of the Narcissist. And on this side, there is a more narcissistic way of getting things done. <gasps> He said we should be narcissists! It'd be a bloody riot! <coughs> See that video clip of Jordan Peterson saying you need to embrace your inner psychopath? <laughs> yeah, we're right there. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> Gotta embrace your inner psychopath. Gotta work on my Jordan Peterson impression. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna just keep it just like that. <laughs> I, uh, in, all in all sincerity, I have a strong suspicion that his um, popularity is because everything right now culturally is way too far this way. And people are thirsting for a philosophy of competition. Oh, I didn't write it down. Um, you gotta compete. I told you it was gonna be shit that I would say that you wouldn't like, you gotta compete. Because you've been the run to the litter Oh, damn. You've been the run to the litter, letting everybody push you out of the way. I'm not gonna compete, that's dangerous. And you've been pulling back and avoiding it. Now you must compete. You must compete. You must jostle with others. I think, actually I think his meteoric rise is because of that deep, deep unconscious craving for a philosophy of competition. I think it's over. Please, God. I, I think people are like waking up and going, ah, there might not be as much meat in this dinner as we thought there was originally, because there isn't that much saying. But some of the elements are a tendency to want to be going more this way. I am not telling you to be narcissistic, personality disordered, malignant, exploitative, bastards. But you were supposed to go through a narcissistic phase, right? 
You were supposed to learn to say no, and you were supposed to learn to say mine, and you didn't. So now you must. So when we're doing this mental yoga, we're gonna go into stretches we've never been in before, and we don't go into those stretches, because we don't like those. They're not our favorite stretches. You have to go there. So sometimes, when you're struggling with what I'm telling you to do, ask what the more narcissistic or psychopathic thing to do would be. What would a psychopath do in this situation? They're goal orientated. What would a narcissist do now? If you're all the way over here, and I want you here in the middle, balanced, I want to push you all the way over there so that you'll come back here. This is how we would do it in martial arts. This is a, it's like a principle of training in martial arts. If you have a tendency that's very, very yin, which all this is, by the way, it's an excessive yin. This is excessive yin. I love yin. Oh, it's quiet and dark in the yin cave. <laughs> Nobody can see me in my little yin cave. But I'm also not really telling the truth. I'm not really being me. You're getting a kind of a version of me. You're getting something that I'll give you that I think is safe that won't get me killed. But really, if I'm brave and I'm telling my truth, I should be willing to be killed. Really, I'm not suggesting you guys. Like, that's what I think. That's what I'm up to. I'm like, what is it I'm scared of? What is it I'm scared of, of saying? What is it I'm scared of being? That's where I need to go. This is all the way yang. We want to be balanced. But if you're too yin, I'm going to send you yang to bring you back to the center. That's the way we would have done it in martial arts, and that's the way we'll do it in the martial arts that we're doing here. So the movement is through action, not through thinking about it or doing exercise about it, but by choosing to put yourself first. How simple is that? Put yourself first. I put me first. If you're taking notes, or you're just sat there listening to me, going glassy eyed, we are gonna take a break in a second. Think about something that you could do in the next 24 hours that would be only for you, that would be for you putting yourself first. Whatever your unconscious just spat out, that needs to be wrestled with. Your unconscious has gone, do this. Even if it seems like, well, that's not important, that's something to do with a car, or that's something to do with my kitchen, do it. It could be a symbol for something else. It could be massively effective if you do it, if you take a hold of it, and just do it for you, not for anybody else. Does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna take a break. You can turn that off. Um, I don't know whether to